uh, for the Doge's accordion here is here. So now that we got the container ready, uh, let's put in some of the actual data from the panes inside of it. We are going to create a pane for each of the books that is available to us from the paginator array, if you remember from the early tutorials. So we're going to do a similar setup like we had before with a for each loop that picks up the information from the paginator, puts it in a book variable, and now we're going to do the, the pain part. So we're going to echo out an accordion pain. And once again, it has three or actually this time four parameters. First one is being of course the ID. Each pane must have a unique ID. If it doesn't, then it overrides the other ones that have the same ID. So to make sure that our ID is unique, I am going to assign a book with the book's ID. So this way I know that all panes are going to have unique ID and there will be no conflicts. In this particular method, the second parameter is the actual content for the pane. And my content is going to be the author. So I'm going to say written by book author. And just like before, the third parameter, well it was the second last time, but it's third this time, is the attribute available from the Doge's library itself, and in this case it's setting of the title. Finally, the attributes for the tag of the pane from the HTML's point of view. Don't have to do this one, but I'm going to um, just set a background color to something else just so that it's more readable. Okay. So let's see what that looks like now. Alright, we got our accordion view with a pane for each of the books. Now at the moment it looks very ugly and this is due to something I really do not like about the Doge library. And that's f that for the theme to be activated, it needs to be put into the body. So I'm going to have to access the layout and I am going to add a class to the body called Tundra. And this way the widget is activated. Uh, among many things, this is one of the major reasons I do not uh, really like to use Dojo in Zen Framework is because it forces me to apply one of its classes to the body so it can potentially conflict with uh, other style sheets that you may want to apply. Uh, this is not a problem at all for the jQuery's integration of Zen Framework. So in the next video, I will show you how to do the identical procedure using the jQuery component of Zen Framework.